Hey everyone, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear. I'm here in the commercial kitchen. We're doing a commercial crew review of the Puck Press Q2. Uh, so this is the new Puck Press from Puck Press. Uh, this replaced the Q1 that they made. Um, this model came out a little bit ago. Um, we recently started carrying it, so we're doing a review of it so you know what to expect uh, and how it works and how to set it up and all that sort of stuff. This specifically is the 58.3 millimeter model. Um, so that's a bit more about that. But before we jump in, I know a lot of you in the comments are gonna be saying how expensive this is and just wanted to address that real quick. You can follow links to our site um, to purchase it or to get more info on it. Um, but this is a commercial product. And I've seen this in use in cafes that are really busy doing like more than 300 cups a day. Um, I've talked to the owners, to the baristas, and it's performed like a champ, like a workhorse. Hasn't had any issues, is always consistent, more consistent than a barista in a fast paced environment. So when you weigh the cost of it against that kind of use case, it really isn't as expensive as you think. And it also minimize the potential of stress injuries for your wrist. And if you are not familiar with that, um, either you've always tamped perfectly or you haven't worked in a busy enough cafe. So it is expensive, but it does fill a very valuable role, potential role in a cafe. So with that, let's talk about it here. Like I said, this is the Q2 58.3 edition. The 58.3 just means that the tamper is a little bit larger. It's more like a precision size tamper. So we have, just as an example, I have a rattleware tamper here. Um, this is a 58 millimeter tamper. So if you tamped with one of these or with any standard tamper, you'll probably notice there's a little ring of untamped coffee around the outside edge of your puck. If you tamp with one of these like this is a Barista Hustle one and it's 58.4 millimeters across. That little extra eliminates that ring of untamped coffee and gets you a little bit more consistent extraction. So the 58.3 versus the 58, one downside of the 58.3 is that if you're moving quickly or you have new baristas, you could run the risk of getting it stuck in the portafilter. Um, I got it stuck in one portafilter that like, just didn't quite fit right in this. Um, and to remedy that, I just turned it off, waited, and then turned it back on. And then the tamping mechanism went back up into the grinder and we were all good to go again. So not that big of a deal. And the time we got it stuck was with a portafilter that was like an older one that didn't have like a perfect casting on it. So it was a slightly imperfect portafilter and that got stuck in this. Uh, we did test it with a Rancilio portafilter, a Simonelli portafilter, a Rocket portafilter, even a Breville portafilter, and they all worked. Um, we tested it with a bunch of different baskets. Um, we did find that you have to kind of play with your basket and portafilter combo occasionally to get it to work, uh, but it will work with any machine. You might just have to do a little bit of trial and error with your basket and portafilter combo to get it to do the trick. So. Just a little caveat there, uh, but it's exciting because it is a very multi-purpose tool that works with a lot of different machines. Let's talk about um, this right here. This is the only controls on the entire machine. Um, this number here represents the amount of force that's being applied when tamping. So you've long heard, you know, you need 40 pounds, whatever, of force um, to tamp consistently. That's kind of gone out of, out of the way. Um, people are more about just tamping the same every single time. But with this, um, you can play around with more or less pressure and see, that how, see how that affects your extraction. If you tamp it harder, it's probably gonna slow down your extraction initially um, and it'll catch up later. Uh, so see how that affects your extraction if you tamp lighter, um, you're probably gonna see your shots drop faster. Your shot times might be a little bit faster, but um, just play with it. See what you like once you get it. It does give you that freedom to adjust it. Um, and it adjusts by increments of two when you're in pounds. Um, you can also make it run in kilograms. Um, we are in the US and we use imperial units, so we're doing this in pounds. Sorry for all my um, non-US folks out there. 
It also comes with uh, your tools that you need for setting up your, um, they call this the lower clamp. It's like a portafilter holder. So it has two bolts right down there uh, and you get this um, tool to adjust that. Um, and then this tool is used to adjust um, or used for cleaning. Um, there's a little nut in here that this is used for as part of the cleaning process. Um, and that's all described in this little startup guide here. Um, that's just like a, a three page, two sided startup guide. It also comes with a full length user manual, but this gives you everything you need to know. Um, and just remember, clean your puck press every day. If you're in a coffee shop, you're gonna be cleaning out your grinders every night anyways. So just clean out the puck press as part of your closing procedure. When you're back flushing, doing your grinders, puck press just falls right into that as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the programming that you can do on this. To get into the deeper programming menu, you turn the grinder off with the power switch on the back here. Then once the lights are out, you hold the clean button and the plus button. So hold those two down and then turn it back on and it'll say SE and that means you are in the programming mode. And if you look at the last page of this manual, you'll see that you are, it has a little guide of what the programming is. Um, the most important part is this one highlighted in orange here. This is the new slow tamp uh, programming that they have on it. So on the old puck press, um, folks would complain about um, just the speed of the tamp would sometimes crack the puck and the puck would fall out or cause channeling. So now if you press the clean button and go to where it says, almost there, C1, and then press plus, you can change it back and forth. This is normal tamp. And then O1 is the slow tamp. So I found that works a little bit better. It adds like 0.8 of a second to your total tamping time, but it gives you a little bit more consistency and just less channeling. So that's how I would set mine up. That's how we have this set up. To get out of that programming, you just press the clean button a few times, and then you're back to that 30, which is the weight again, and that means you're in the normal operation. So that covers kind of the deeper programming of it. To clean it, you just press the clean button, and it will drop the tamping mechanism down and just brush it off, wipe it off, uh, whatever you can do to get the coffee off of that. Um, there is more kind of robust cleaning that you can do, um, and that's where your tool comes in. You can pop the top off of this, um, and then if you look into here, you can unscrew this and actually take the whole tamper out, and you can get in there and do more cleaning. So I would recommend doing that cleaning at the end of the night and then do um, that wiping cleaning, probably like if you're doing a midday back flush or back flushing every hour or two hours, like a lot of specialty shops are doing, then you would use um, this cleaning cycle while you're doing a midday back flush and then take out the tamper while you're doing your closing routine and clean out your grinders and all that. So press clean and it goes right back up in there. Super simple and it's back for operation. To set it up before you use it, it does have that guide in here, but I'll just show you while I have the top off. Um, make sure the grinder is off, or the puck press is off and unplugged. And then you're going to flip it upside down. Trust me, this actually is in the guide. And then it has on the bottom here, this little knob that adjusts the lower clamp or the portafilter holder, whatever you want to call it. So. It actually sits nicely upside down without the cover on it. And then you take your little wrench here and you can come in and undo each of these bolts. So I'll show you, I have this one set up, but undo one, I have them pretty tight here as well. Undo two, and then you can twist this to shift it up or shift it down. And then if you take your portafilter you can go in and see what's going on there. Um, I would recommend kind of leaning the portafilter back before you set that in place. And then before you tighten it all the way down, so get it kind of a little bit more than finger tight, flip it around, 
and then test your porta filter with it in the stand, like just normal position. Um, a couple times I was adjusting it for different porta filters. I adjusted it till it was tight against the porta filter while it was upside down, and then flipped it over. And just in the kind of transition, I couldn't quite get the porta filter all the way in. So um, I'd recommend doing a test fit before you tighten it all the way down. And that is gonna have 30 pounds of pressure applied to it pretty consistently. So you do wanna get those fairly snug. Almost drop that, put my cover back on, plug it back in and power it on. Cool. So that covers the cleaning, that covers the setup, some of the programming, but I'm sure you've all been wanting to see it in action. So let's grab some coffee. Um, in the hopper today, I have the Phantom Limb blend, um, and then I have the Olympus 75 from Eureka. Um, it also has the Red Speed burrs in it, so it's grinding pretty fast. I'm gonna wipe out my portafilter. And see what we get. That dose looks a little bit light, but I'm not gonna weigh it for the sake of this. Right in. And there we are. Um, let's see if you can see the edges of that. Um, you can see there's no real ring of coffee around the outside edge. There's like a slight ring just because it's a 0.3, not a 0.8 or 0.5. Uh, but for having that done automatically, I would say that's a pretty darn good tamp. I mean, even if I kind of rotate it around the edge there, you can see based on the ridge in this basket, or at least I hope you can, um, that the tamp is super level. I can rotate it all the way over there. And so you can see it against that edge. Yeah, so super consistent. And as you can see here, it's not coming out. Um, so there's no cracks in it or anything like that. This is some older coffee, um, so it's not as fresh. There's not as much um, CO2 or gases in it. So I've noticed older coffee tends to channel a little bit more. So I don't think it's anything with the grinder or the puck press. It's just the coffee's old. So let's pull this as a shot um, and I'll taste it and we'll wrap things up. I have no clue what my end weight was. So we're just gonna trust whatever the double shot button on this machine is set to. And let's see here. Looks pretty consistent so far. Um, when I was testing it with the spouted porta filters, um, it was really satisfying because both dropped at the exact same time every single time. So it looked like a, like a photo perfect um, shot. So that was about 34 grams out in 23 seconds. Rinse that all out. Let's grab a little mug and I'll taste this and give you some of my impressions. Alrighty, I transferred it into a Dimitas here. Smell. Smells pretty good. Um, I just back flushed this side of the machine, so I'm actually pretty excited for this shot. It should be pretty clean. It's probably pretty hot though, and I'm a wimp. Well, that got two sips for me. That's good espresso, and I hardly had to do anything um, with just grinding, settling it, and then tamping, and I got good results. So if I got served that at a cafe, I'd be pretty happy. I'm sure the baristas would be happy just because their wrists aren't getting sore. You don't have to worry quite as much about training. I'd still recommend training your baristas on how to tamp properly just in case this has issues. Um, so I'd keep that in mind. Um, don't completely get rid of that in your barista training, but this does make a huge difference when it comes to workflow, consistency, um, and then just less potential for injury on the job. So that's the puck press Q2 58.3 uh, size or tamper. Um, if you have more questions that I didn't cover, oh, this also comes out, 
catches some of the grounds there, makes cleaning a little bit easier. Uh, make sure to leave a comment down below. Um, once the video gets posted, I'll make sure to jump in the comments um, for a couple days after and just try and get back to any questions you might have about this. Um, if you want to start a coffee shop or you want to get some equipment for your coffee shop, give us a call. We'd love to chat with you, either myself or one of the other folks on the commercial equipment team. Make sure to check us out on um, our YouTube page for all our other videos. Uh, we're also on all the other social media spots, just Seattle Coffee Gear. And check out our website for any other content you might need. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you check out the rest of our videos and subscribe.